In today's video, I show you how to assess a hip MRI. If you want to support me on a more personal level, consider becoming one of my Patreons. You can find the link to my Patreon page down in the description. Being a Patreon is awesome because you get access to monthly content that is only available for my Patrons and you can have quizzes and monthly votes on what topics I should make a video about. So make sure to check the link out and I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any. As in my other videos I will not talk about which sequences or which planes you should acquire but give you a general approach on which structure to assess in which order and that's basically just how I read hip MRI and maybe you find it helpful. If you do, please comment below and now let's start. As I said, I'm not going to cover which sequences to use, but a typical hip exam could look something like this here. A coronal view of the whole pelvis is sometimes useful because you can also assess the pubic symphysis and also can get a glimpse of the sacroiliac joints and sometimes you have the other side for comparison if necessary. Also you get a good overview over all the musculature. Always helpful is to have some localizers or short sequences over both hips and both knees in order to measure the femoral torsion. You can measure the femoral torsion by measuring the angle of the femoral neck axis and then you measure the angle of the femoral condyles on the same side. You can use bow, bone or cartilage, doesn't matter. And then so we have 12 degrees here, 6 degrees here. You add that up so we have a femoral torsion of around 18 degrees. You can do it also on the other side for comparison and see whether there is a su substantial side difference. As in other joints, I always start off with the bony structure. So I have a look at the femoral head, the femoral neck, trochanter region and also the acetabular bone and all the other bony structures that are visible on my sequences. And I describe any bone marrow edema, fractures such as stress fractures and stuff like that. If you have radial images, hopefully better than this one, you can assess the femoral head neck junction and describe any cam deformities there. You can also see some cam deformities already on your axials, but this only gives you the cam deformity here at the anterior position, whilst most of the cam deformities are located anterosuperiorly. You do not have to measure the alpha angle because it's basically a useless measurement because of the large overlap between symptomatic and asymptomatic patients. I typically just give a statement such as mild, moderate or severe cam deformity. In case you don't have radial images, you can simply take any of your axles and do some fast reformating yourself and basically scroll through to see whether there is any cam deformity at the anterosuperior position or any other position that you're interested in. Once I have described all the osseous structures, then I move on to the joint itself. The first thing I always look at is the ligamentum teres or the ligamentum cavitis femoris here, whether the ligament origin here in the fovea is normal, whether the signal intensity is normal, and the insertion down here. Sometimes you see fraying or partial tears, sometimes even complete tears and sometimes you don't see the ligament at all. There is more and more belief that it can actually be a pain generator in the hip, especially in athletes. So always pay close attention to this ligament. The next structure you want to assess is the labrum. The labrum is this structure here. It should be black like in this case all the way through with a nice transition onto the cartilage. The best sequence to assess for labral tears is the sagittal view. I can start laterally and then follow the labrum all the way to the medial portion of the joint and here at the anterosuperior position that's where the tears most often occur. Here probably with some perilabral ganglion cysts. So this is a labral tear and this is the rest of the labrum. This is even part of the base and then you have the chondrolabral transition here. The next structure you have to assess is the cartilage and there just make an assessment of the femoral cartilage and the acetabular cartilage separately. See if there are any irregularities or defects, sometimes with associated bone marrow edema. 
I just want to mention here that sometimes you can see this very black line especially at the transition of the labrum and the cartilage in the acetabular side and in some studies it is believed that this might actually reflect a cartilage delamination although you don't see fluid between the cartilage and the bone or within the cartilage and this can happen if the delamination has no connection to the joint but it's delaminated just like a carpet and you get some signal abnormalities in the cartilage sometimes you see it and the cartilage is still normal so it's not a perfect sign but keep it in mind i would think this one is probably a little bit too dark but it's also depending on your sequences i'll put the study that described this finding down in the description so after assessing the ligament the labrum and the cartilage you can also see whether there are any synovial proliferations or any adhesions and stuff like that after you described all the joint structures give all the periarticular structures a good look and typically you can start off with the tendons check for the gluteus minimus tendon here inserting into this facet here then the gluteus medius tendon with its super posterior portion and the lateral portion here then always look at the iliopsoas tendon and whether there is bursitis or not in around 12% the iliopsoas bursa may have a connection to the joint always also give a look here at the rectus femoris tendon this one is the direct head and this one is the indirect head the pars reflexa and the pars recta here last but not least always make sure you check for inguinal hernias because they can simulate hip pain or groin pain and you don't want to miss it on your MR scan as usual thanks for watching and i hope you learned something new today and can hopefully apply it to your own practice if you like the content that i do make sure to subscribe to my channel and also give the video a like what are you waiting for do it okay i think one time is enough <laughs>